I mean, you can't have a party without bats. True story. Bats bring the party. So globally, bats pollinate 300 to 500 species of plants. This includes agave, we, you want the tequila at your party, avocado, so if you want guacamole, they pollinate the avocados, mango, you want mango salsa, you need it. They also pollinate cocoa beans, so if you want chocolate, we're going to need bats. They'll eat the fruit in the forest and then um, fly across open lands where they clear cut complete rainforest and poop out those seeds. In. They reforest 99% of the forest globally, so that's, that's really important. You know? They feed on um, crop pests and they also feed on mosquitoes. So one bat can eat 1,000 to 3,000 mosquitoes a night. If we didn't have bats, it would greatly increase uh, for the agricultural and industry uh, the amount of pesticides ne needed um, in order to grow and keep the crop production to the extent it is now. That would take me a ton of time to do. I would never have the time to do all that. Um, we also do passive monitoring, which is a bat detector that you can leave on site. It looks a lot like an animal cam, and so we just hook them up on trees at a variety of locations. Um, and what we do with that is we monitor bats' migration patterns. Particularly what we use it for is to um, be part of the Greater Chicago Land Network on bat monitoring to collect data that is necessary to um, control habitat or, pro or provide the necessary habitat for the existence of bats. Over time, after we get a couple years, we'll be able to tell a lot of information. And a combination of all of the data that we collect, the echometer data, the antibat data, the passive and the active bat monitoring that we did with the mist netting, and that older version of the antibat, all of that data combined can tell us a lot of things. It can tell us what bats are here, um, the relative abundance of them, and then over time we'll be able to see if, let's say the white nose syndrome that's affecting bats right now, we'll be able to see if that's, if we can, if those species are declining here in Will County because of all the monitoring we're doing. We've done everything humanely possible to try to get them to relocate, but um, they have decided otherwise. The bats have definitely shown their signs that they have no interest in moving out. Just 
Given the design of the shelter, it is a uh, old CCC shelter and it has little nooks and crannies in, within the shelter that the bats find favorable. Big browns are probably the most common bat, and it's probably because they're a species that uh, roosts in colonies, that the, they have um, female, like the maternity colonies. Um, so when you come across big brown bats, you will get a lot of them at one time. Big browns specialize in hard-bodied bugs. Um, they like, you know, like grasshoppers or corn earworm. Um, so that's what they specialize in little brown bats are the mosquito specialists. So it'd be great if we had um, some colonies of little brown bats here in Will County, but to the best of my knowledge, we just get some bachelors. Most of my recordings are just like a handful of little brown bats. They are all very important. We need bats.